You're listening to the Connect Church podcast featuring the pastoral staff of Connect Church in Tupelo, Mississippi. This podcast delivers biblical truths, hot topic discussions, and encouragement you need on your daily journey to live like Christ. The Human Resources Department requires that I be available. Not sure if the invite cards are nifty, but the mustache is definitely not. He's in charge of our children. What are we doing? Uh, I don't. Here are your hosts, Terry Pierce, Andrew Pierce, and Tanner Stahl. Thank you all for being here. Let's get started. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whenever you're listening to this wonderful podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the Connect Church podcast brought to you by the pastoral staff of Connect Church Tupelo. We have brazed Snowmageddon. I think that's what they're calling this. No, or ice Ice-mageddon. Ice-mageddon. Yeah, we didn't get any snow. It's just all ice. We, we braved the weather to uh, come out to the podcast studio today and get this going for you guys. Don't want you to miss out on the weekly blessings of the Connect Church podcast. So how are you guys doing today, Terry? Andrew? I'm enjoying getting my tan on today. It's really just, you know. It's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> you got a tanning bed at home? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> just imagine that. That was a visual we all didn't need. <laughs> good thing it's a podcast. <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. You're not a, yeah, we're not recording that uh, visually very good. <laughs> Yeah, so have you, y'all gone sledding or anything? Which, I mean, I saw you sent me a video doing the donuts in the golf cart. That was epic. That was good. Uh, old man dangerous is that, when you're on a golf cart and you're doing uh, <laughs> and you're doing donuts with a golf. But I did do it at night with the lights on. So that was, did that you was, post it to social media? I, I haven't done that. You yet. should. I should. You I, should. I agree. Well, it yeah. really just more looks like a you know old guy in a scooter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looked like Bernie Sanders out there just yeah. going to. <laughs> which honestly, this is what we get for making fun of Bernie. Because, That's it. That's you know, it. Yeah, we, you get the snowstorm of the century. It's all because of the mittens. Yeah, <laughs> all well, over this. country. We don't even believe in karma, but it's still coming around. To That's us. right. That's right. <laughs> Maybe That's Bernie right. was onto something. <laughs> All right, so we started off a new sermon series this Sunday called Forever Families. I can't remember. Is there a little subtitle of that sermon or is it just Forever, Forever Families? It is what it is. There totally was one, and I cannot remember I can't remember it. what it is I have either. to quote it for the announcement. I mean, like the sermon series. Like, you know, our next sermon series is going to be Philippians, A Journey of Joy. joy or what, yes. The Joy in the Journey or joy whatever. In the journey. I think this is just Forever Families. It is. It okay, is. all right, yeah. yeah. There's no, like, subtitle to the to the sermon Keep, series. Keeping topic. it simple, baby. Right. All right, so you dove into Matthew 19, Terry. Give us a quick summary of Matthew 19, and then I'll ask a question for you. Absolutely. It's a uh, marvelous text that uh, Jesus is, uh, you got to love this, the local Legalist Baptist Association was coming in to try to trap Jesus, and they uh, pin him down and think, we've got him under controversy. We're going to ask him the question about divorce. And there were two, um, and this is very important to understand the the context of the passage, there were literally two schools of thought, and they were literally two different training schools. And one was more of a conservative view that took the word out of Deuteronomy 24.1, the word indecency, and literally translated as any kind of sexual immorality. And then the more liberal schools said, well, we're just believing that that means that if your wife burns the beans and the pork chops, then you should divorce her. And wow. so, so yeah. Wow. Hey, well, yeah. I'm sorry, they were Jewish. They didn't do pork chops, probably, did they? So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. That's good. It just sort of. Hey, you know, on your toes was, for you. Good job. That was good. good. He's had time to. He's had three days done. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. I've not been doing much for three days. But anyway, That's right. it so, is Wednesday, by the way. Normally we do this on Tuesday. It is Wednesday, so we're true. all having to refresh the pod. The assignment and, here. And if you catch any. Um, just um, anger, frustration with the staff with me today is because I made them come in and nobody else is going to work, but they're right. here, so yeah. I got to give them props. So I got to get them props. Right. So, yeah, even though I had to pick up uh, Rebecca and bring her in to work for a secretary, but anyway, <laughs> so it's all good. All good. Um, anyway, so they had these two schools of thoughts and they were really. You know, just trying to trap Jesus, and they knew that he was going to blow this, you know, that he was going to mess this up, and they were going to, you know, trap him into saying something, you know, weird. And and one of the things to really remember is as you interpret the Scripture by the way it was written, and um, one of the things that comes out of this is that they looked at Jesus as this hillbilly from Nazareth, and I loved studying that in the commentaries. So they thought that, man, we're going to get him, and then they forgot, and this was the important piece, that he is the author of Deuteronomy. 24-1, yeah. you, you morons. You know? <laughs> he wrote so, the thing. <laughs> he wrote the thing, and so they just didn't get it, and so he slams them and just really identifies what, you know, and that's what the subject of the sermon was today. You know, this is God's plan for marriage, God has a plan for singles, and God has a plan for divorced people, and, you know, we are the ones that have sort of jacked it all up, but God's got a plan for all three. 
Yeah, so the Pharisees, like you just said, you know, they hate Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, pretty much. That's the, absolutely the right way to put it. They hated yeah, him, absolutely. even though they're literally watching and visually seeing his ministry, healing them, loving them, doing everything that Jesus does. Yep. So why do they why do they hate him? I'm just like, yeah, um, you think in our time, if I saw this guy claiming to be the Christ and doing what he's doing, I'd be a follower. I mean. In, in theory, right? and I'll let Andrew elaborate on this a little bit more. But it was all about power. I yeah. mean, you can put oh, it okay. very simply. So definition. they were Democrats. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, lo- nothing left to elaborate on. We're That's good. Right. <laughs> and, and on that note, the logic, uh, follow the logic, uh, had went out the window because the truth of the matter is, is that it didn't matter the truth that he was sharing, like you just said, in the demonstration of power. It was all about them losing control over the common man. Mm-hmm. They had to be in control so they kept telling people what they wanted to hear and jesus said no 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 this is the father's plan you guys don't even care about you want to control people and jesus comes along and says i am the one that really can help change people so that was a huge dynamic and they were threatened by the common man falling in love with jesus so yeah i know even in uh one of my personal uh hear journals and stuff we were reading on john 9 about the how Jesus healed the blind man on the Sabbath and how they were more concerned with the fact that he healed him on the Sabbath and like breaking that law in and of itself more than the fact that he healed a blind man. Like he spit in mud, rubbed in his eyes, healed him. And they were more concerned with the fact that they broke the law of working on the Sabbath. The same context here in Matthew 19. I mean, it's, it's they, they were so jealous. They were so burned up with pride and hatred that they wanted to stay in power because the Religious leaders were also the political leaders at the time, and they were so concerned with him overthrowing the kingdom while because they had heard that Jesus was going to set up his kingdom on earth and everything else. But it wasn't it wasn't America. It wasn't, um, you know, Israel. It wasn't anything else. It was the heavenly kingdom. And they completely missed the point altogether. And so they were just working. It didn't matter what he did. He could have done the he literally did do the most amazing (laughs) miracles. He literally wrote the book on the topic. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter what he said, what he did. They were going to hate him no matter what. And it's just they're they're morons. (laughs) Yeah. All right, so Terry, you touched on the hot topic of divorce in the church. Sure. Uh, so why do we tend to go to extremes when it comes down to how we treat divorce in the church? And then what is the big takeaway about divorce that you would want our podcast listeners to hear today? Yeah, and I think that's, you know, one of the, we even despite the shutdown with the cold, you know, weather and the uh, inch or so of ice, but the um, the whole topic about divorce and in the message, you know, about singles, we, we've had, uh, I've gotten feedback this week, text and, and emails, you know, and calls from folks that both have been through divorce and single, and to understand, and that's what the whole point of the message was, God not only has a plan for marriage, but he has a plan for singles and he has a plan for divorce in the, in the whole purpose of, you know, that we talked about. And, you know, one of the great takeaways, if you haven't heard the message, I need married folks to listen in intensively. The, one of the most frustrating things that happens is that we need to understand that marriage is a covenant. And that was the first point that, you know, we elaborated on, but in, when you get to the divorce issue, first of all, the, it's the hardness of the heart you know, I get frustrated, to be honest with you, Tanner, is that people will come to me after they've watched their marriage just all, and it's hanging by a thread, and their hearts are so bitter because of the pain and the failures and the relationships, and and they need counseling way, sometimes years before they come to me, and then there's nothing I can do because it is so hard, and that's what happened in Deuteronomy 24.1. Because of sin, people have gotten their selves into such a, uh, you know, a difficult and their hearts were hardened. So Moses just said, there's nothing else we can do, but allow divorce in these, you know, exceptional cases. And so, uh, but know this is that God, and this is why we want you to come to us sooner, because even in divorce, God heals. And this is the point of the message. Right. God has a plan for those that have been through the pain of divorce, even the hardened hearts. And our church is living example of God redeeming and he can heal anything. So right. come to us sooner, come to us sooner, because God is able to heal and fix anything. Yeah, that's good. You also talked about dating and, uh, you know, singleness, which is, dating is something I have little to no experience in. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I pointed that sh- out in the yeah, message. Yeah. He shared that with the I know, yeah, and you're exactly correct. I can't, I have no objection. Uh, I was, I was, and I still am no good at dating, planning dates, anything involving dating. Uh, but you covered some topics that I think hit uh, out of the park from, that I may have hit out of the park way back when, you know, dating is about friendship. 
Uh, never date anyone that is not a Christian. Date for clarity, not intimacy. Um, and then fourthly, seek God first in dating and your significant other second. I may not have done so well on that part of it, but the first three I was, I was good with. Uh, so so talk a little more, expound on dating, uh, if you will, and, and anything you want to say on that. Yeah, I'll, I'll le- defer this one to Andrew because this is more in the teen department, but... Uh... <laughs> I, got some good, I got some good background music for Andrew, you. Andrew, th- this is why Tanner struggled to not have a date. Because <laughs> this is this kind of stuff right here. Nerd so. alert. <laughs> Nerd alert. So, yeah, um, I'll let Andrew hit uh, some of the highlights, but I think that... I was going to get uh, Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On. No, no, no. no, no. I, I'm so thank- I, I just I, went with some instrumentals. Honestly, that was a terrified moment when you started playing music. I was like, please don't let it be that. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I just feel like if I'm going to explain this, all right, now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> anyway, I'm sitting here with three guys. What's the Bible the say about dating? Huh? <laughs> I, I don't oh even know what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. It, speaking Terry, of that issue. Terry's like a whole train wreck right now. Yes, <laughs> so yes. uncomfortable. God said to date for clarity and not intimacy. All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, you know, and I'll let Andrew, because he's working with teens all the time. So I, I, it was really, you know, I'm hoping and praying that, that parents went home and had discussions about this, because this is the reason that we, we gave this point. But it's so paramount that we learn to develop friendships and, and really on that point of clarity and intimacy is the fact that we we so mess up relationships because we feel like that I need to you know be loved in, in physical relationships and your whole point of dating is is you're trying to develop a friendship because what's going to matter is that covenant that we began the sermon with and if you just have the intimacy I'm telling you they're going to bail on you they're never going to you know stick with you through through the thick and thin of life and so clarity is needed and I'll let Andrew talk a little bit more about yeah, and if you guys didn't have a chance, of course, we have the Connect Church Sermon Playback podcast where you guys can go listen to that sermon, and that well, will be te- up. Technically, in, in all the chaos on Sunday, we forgot to record the sermon for oh, the podcast. No. Now, <laughs> if I can ever get back in the office, I can take the video and rip the audio and then post that there on the go. podcast. So it's coming. Awesome. It, it will be coming, but it's okay. not there yet. And it's okay. on the live stream. It's, it's on, on the YouTube you can go on channel, Facebook all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got other ways, avenues to do that, so but it will web, be on the podcast. You can go to the website and the watch website, it. The website, absolutely. Yeah, okay, gotcha. um, so if you haven't you know, gone and listened to that, um, you know, we, we don't like shy away from the tough topics we talk about, you know, relationships relationships, about divorce, about all of it, uh, dating. And so one of the cool things is we actually have been going through relationships on Wednesday nights in our teen series. And uh, just last week, before all this, we talked about relationships with boyfriends or girlfriends within the context of teenagers too. And so, man, it's it's amazing to how the Holy Spirit works. Everything Terry was saying, I had four different points worded di- differently, but the same concept. Um, you know, you're not just dating for that physical attraction because, um, like our wives can attest, our uh, the physical attraction may fade over time. But what are um, you saying? <laughs> are you saying I, don't look good? I think I look pretty good. <laughs> You think. Um, but. Just watch the video of him going down the driveway with the uh, hog's flag last night. So. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I, no, thanks. Like a butterball um, just going down the freezer. Yeah. It went right on in the neighborhood. <laughs> oh, but, uh, you know, even with all of this context of dating and everything, is uh, it's it's so important. Like we were telling them, you, I'm not a believer in missional dating. You should never be dating or interested in someone that is not a believer. Like don't be unequally yoked. Um, But more specifically, because when you do have a tendency to go after somebody that's not, and then you do start dating them, they become your everything. Your goal is to change them. Your goal is to make them a follower of Christ. But in doing so, you're elevating them to the spot of God. And that's only a God-sized void that God can fill, no person. And when they let you down... It's, it, it's, it's even more personal, it's more hurtful, all of these things, than even when you're just in a more, you know, God-centered, healthy, fearing, God-fearing marriage, that, uh, you know, all that we still have these issues, we still have issues when our kids don't listen, we still have issues when um, our wives or husbands don't listen, communication's lost, you know, any needs aren't met, whatever. So it's so important to have all of these four points that Terry shared with us and all of this and do these things while dating, too. And to do those in these way, because, um, you know, this is for life. That's what the goal is. It's a covenant between us and God. And, you know, it's an important one. Yeah. Cool. 
Last thoughts on the sermon? Yeah, it, I think that, you know, one last takeaway, too, is that for those of you that, and, and that was such a cool point, I've never preached on that, but um, uh, first of all, it, for those that are in marriages that you're with an unsaved spouse, uh, man, our church, you know, go back and listen to the message. We committed and made a covenant to pray for you because we, we, we're we praying in 2021 that the unbelieving spouses in our church come to Christ. Mm-hmm. And, and that's because mm-hmm. that's, a you know, it's that that we talked about and gave the illustration of the boat, you're rowing against the, right. you know, and the we talked, there. we talked about the other day privately, it, how much we admire yes. those who come to church every single week. We're there for without you. their spouse. Yeah. I and mean, we're, yeah. we're, cheer, we're cheering you on bring their and, kids even. Yep. And we're praying that God can change that. And, and, and he's the one, and we believe that. And then one last thing too, is that we want to remind everybody that the central piece of the message is that, you know, and I gave the illustration of asking like when I do premarital counseling, uh, you know, and it's always the, the most hilarious thing, guys, is I'll look at, you know, the bride and, and I'll say to her, you know, so define marriage for me. And she just, you can see her eyes, you know, wax over and she's just the flowers and the dress. And, you know, she's just like, oh, it's going to be such a great day. I, I said, no, I'm talking about, you know, marriage, define it for me. And she goes, oh, I don't know. That's all I think about the wedding. You know, anyway, and then the, and you look at the guy and he goes, oh, man, I just, you know, wanted somebody to sleep with and they were laughing at my jokes, you know, and yeah. so, so it's just a whole, you know, and, and so they neither one of them get it right and then they're both just struggling to define marriage and you know and i even ask our listeners right now how would you define marriage because most everybody just goes oh i don't know it just is well and it's it's a one word definition biblically and and it's so powerful as covenant and we define covenant as simply being this uh pastor jd Greer, you know we gave that quote marriage is a union in which god fuses two lives into one and here's the takeaway that you do with this and this is the to me, the centerpiece of why marriages struggle is we do not understand it's a covenant and, and it's the oneness. We keep putting the physical relationship um, in front of everything and thinking that'll solve it all. And, and until God is the forefront of your marriage and he is putting you two together, your mutual goals, your mutual dreams, you know, even your mutual bank account, all of that has to come first. Then the beauty of the physical relationship happens. And when you, when you don't have that covenant Peer, you know, up, up front, what happens is, is you lose the joy and the physical relationship will never sustain it. Yeah. And to um, just add to that is I know that um, it was, it was really good for him to explain the, the depth of what the marital covenant is. Um, because also half the time, if you're more like me and Tanner with our wives, it's probably more like uh, you say, what do you want for dinner until, you know, one of you dies. And that's pretty much <laughs> what I feel like marriage is. You just say, what do you want for dinner? I don't know. What do you want for dinner? Well, what do you want for dinner? And then somebody dies. I mean, that's, did that's somebody marriage. say dinner? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We, we lost Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that'll wrap up our sermon uh, recap discussion. Like I said, we'll get that online on the uh, podcast, hopefully this week, if I can get the time to do that, uh, being here in the office. But you can watch that on Facebook or our website as well, or our Vimeo site. I know a lot of people don't know about Vimeo, but it's there as well. Um, that is the Forever Families Sermon Series Intro Sermon. All right. Yes, yes. Cool. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick, quick break, and then we will be back with more of the Connect Church podcast. If you've been looking for a place to call home, need a place that makes you feel welcome and valued while at the same time growing spiritually in Christ and biblical truths, at Connect Church, our mission is all about loving God, loving people, and making disciples. When we gather together, there's a spirit of worship, a spirit of kindness, and a spirit of welcoming to anyone and everyone who's seeking God's will and truth in their lives. We invite you to visit during one of our two Sunday services to discover how Connect Church can help you grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Our friendly and spirit-filled worship environment is just the place for you. Visit Connect Church this Sunday during our 9 o'clock or 10.30 a.m. services located at 1650 North Veterans Boulevard in Tupelo, Mississippi. Or you can check out our live stream on our Facebook page or our website at www.triconnect.church. Again, that's www.triconnect.church. We look forward to connecting with you. And we are back on the Connect Church Podcast, podcast episode 006. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, wherever you can find a podcast. Find it, 
Like it, rate it, share it, do what you got to do. We thank you for it. All right, guys, it is time for the best and the worst of the weekend. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Wait, 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 wait. Which was it? This is the worst. <laughs> All right, going around the table, Andrew. What's your best? I guess it's been almost a full week since we've done this. So what's yeah. you know what's the best of the last seven days for you, Andrew? Um, I don't have anything crazy exciting. Um, I can quote pretty much every line of Toy Story at this point because <laughs> we uh, we don't have any source of live television in my house anymore. So it's been on Disney Plus for the last four yes. days. Nora. Um, but what, probably I'm going to get serious brownie points since we talked about marriage. The best for me was my wife. Uh, first off, Saturday, she made a, um, <laughs> in all irony, <laughs> it's called a better than sex cake. <laughs> Now, is that out of the books that he posted on the yeah. sermon screen? The, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. Were, <laughs> moving on. That, she made that for a connect group, and then we didn't have connect groups. So I have this Wait, whole... Wait, so you made a sex cake for connect group? <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. Good. I'm not telling you about that part. Um, just <laughs> So she made that cake. Let's go to break. This <laughs> is adult, pro- adult programming. This is adult programming. Um, I've had that entire cake, and then she also made a brownie fudge pie. It's a brownie pie. It's delicious. And then our neighbors brought over like three dozen cookies um, and stuff. So, I mean, I'm going to look like a massive cow by the time Your pants everything do look is- a little tight. Yes. <laughs> Why are you looking at my pants, yeah. t- Tanner? But, <laughs> um, you know, outside of that, we have been eating phenomenal. Um, we got all our milk and bread and everything before the storm. I'm not sure what we did anything with the bread, but Nora likes the milk, so we're good. All right, that was an inter- now because of your best, it's our rating is a PG-13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how to follow that yeah. up. So, we're, we're, are we supposed to be doing best? That, best. That, yeah. that, <laughs> the worst is going to be what he just said. Yeah. In oh my no, week, mine so. was the best. Trust me. <laughs> Uh, my best would be similar, but the clean version, uh, anyway, <laughs> is that um, just uh, being able to chill a little bit, hang out, and eat. Uh, Blend makes the best chili, and um, it has. I it, like chili. Yes, it will. It'll take care of your of your insides. <laughs> but it was. Uh, but it was. Uh, it's awesome, and uh, so we we've uh, been staying warm with the chili. Good. My best, and you already alluded to it earlier, is the Arkansas Razorback men's basketball team. There you go. Watching Arkansas play makes me happier than the pig, and you know what? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Anyways, yeah, we got seven straight wins. Uh, we need. I'm. I, I'm not going to put on a hat or anything, but I need Ole Miss to win on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they beat LSU tomorrow night, then uh, Arkansas will have sole possession of second place in no the conference. Kidding. So you guys any I'm chance of catching Alabama? Uh, no, not unless they just fall off the cliff. I mean, yeah. we got to play them again next week uh, at home, so we have a chance to beat them. But unless they just start losing left and right, we won't catch them. And but that's who, fine. But who Can't, cares? You're going to finish ahead of Kentucky. That's, so, oh, yeah. well, Kentucky hey. is six and thirteen. Six and thirteen. <laughs> Kentucky. I just want to hear one good hotty toddy for tomorrow night's game. Well, we'll have to see how they perform. If they win, maybe I'll give you one. But I mean, yes, I said maybe. I said Simply maybe. Simply the best. Yeah. Anyways, did so our, that, did did I catch this right though? Because I mean, I've been out of the loop with sports stuff this week. But did State get smashed by Vandy? They they lost like twenty one, <laughs> nineteen or twenty one points. I mean, just destroyed Vanderbilt with who's the coach? Like Stephon Marbury or somebody? Nobody weird. even cares. Yeah, I don't know. But they, their player. janitor, I mean, outscored them. <laughs> yeah, it's State. bad. That's did bad. they have only like fifty points against Vandy? Andy? I think they had like 49. <laughs> wow. It was really bad. I could be wrong on that. Don't don't quote me on that. But wow. Yeah, it was I felt bad. I'm, so, for I'm really sorry, didn't. state fans, but I just saw that and I was shocked. This I mean, is my I'm, favorite, like simply the best moments <laughs> that we've ever shared on here. Yeah, well, I'm anyways, not trying to rag on them. I just I just saw that. And I, just I, can't, I can't yeah, believe they, they, they lost bad. by twenty to, to Vandy. Yeah, they they were really bad. Anyways, we play A and M on Saturday and hopefully we'll whoop their tail too. Cause I, I, be, I mean, that's the school I can't stand the most in the SEC. Well, besides Kentucky and Auburn. Ole Miss, well, that's because it, <laughs> Alabama. I still hate eight. eight uh, that's because so they're really middle it. of the road. Yeah. <laughs> well, anything if ta- if people don't know Tanner, anything with Texas in front of it. That's yeah, right. That just, Absolutely. You know. I like the state, but as far as their sports teams in the state, I can live without them. Tanner All says right. everything's better in Texas. Mm-hmm. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> um, anyways, and my other best, my quick best is I have really enjoyed being at home the last two days uh, with my wife and kids. We've had a lot of fun sledding down. Yeah. The, I mean, it's the first time since we've lived here that we've enjoyed our driveway. driveway yes. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> you, that, you that have a, a very steep driveway, right? We we've had a lot of fun with the wife and kids and the neighbors and everything else. So. And just, just so the Department of uh, Children Services knows that yes, their kids were sliding out into the street. Yes, they sure were. I mean, most of the neighborhood kids were. So. 
So I mean, that's fine. The yeah. cop across the street was catching them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the SWAT, the SWAT officer across the street was catching them. All right, Andrew, what's your worst of the weekend? Um, honestly, my worst. It's not that bad, but uh, I happened actually on the way to get here. Is I hadn't moved my car in three days. It's iced over, snowed over, and right before we moved here, we got rid of our ice scraper because I'm like, we're moving to Mississippi. Why do I need an ice scraper? And then God's like, ah. but <laughs> um, uh, I actually had to get my pizza pan. Like, I literally, it's the only thing I could find that wasn't going to, like, destroy my windshield. have, like, a metal spatula or something? We don't have any metal ones. I looked. I'm for real. We have wooden ones and plastic ones that are silicone or whatever. So I get a pizza pan. And, y'all, I had my neighbor, I think, taking a video of it. I'm probably TikTok famous because I'm sitting here, like, like just shaking a pizza pan. Like, you know, he probably thought I was saying, and this is for calling me this. And, like, was taking some anger out on my car trying to chip away the ice. And I actually broke the pizza pan. So, true story, I broke a metal pan trying should, to de-ice my car. You know what? Car. You got a hammer? Just hammer that thing. I mean, that ice will come right <laughs> off. You know? well, I thought. Well, I was like, do I pour hot water on it? No, it's glass. Okay, no, better not. <laughs> you did a great job raising your son. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the really part next week's podcast will be over. I got to get a new windshield. I don't know why. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> why is all the paint chipped off my car? <laughs> Tell your worst of the week. So um, I got the 20, 2001 Chevy Z71 out in the snow. And yeah. uh, so we, it still it took me uh, about 30 minutes to get into four-wheel drive. But once I got into four-wheel drive, the old truck has been through three teenage boys and me sort of maybe turn it over a little bit and in the mud pit. <laughs> but anyway, in all of those things, it still has been what's carried us around the last two days. So it's still uh, doing well. The only thing is it's so old that the uh, window cleaner doesn't work anymore. Whatever that yeah. j- jug is empty. So all of that salt and stuff, I can't see a lick out my windshield. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can great. go anywhere, don't slip, and you know, and, and handle all the road. You're driving with your head out the window. Like yes, a dog. I, I look like Dumb and Dumber. You <laughs> know, <laughs> yes. that was before the ice. <laughs> yes. You know, it wasn't Dumb and Dumber. It was the uh, uh, um, the pet, not Pet Cemetery, but the um, the uh, Ace Ventura. Ace Ventura. Yeah. Did I knew you were talking about? Oh, great. Now I speak Terry. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're fluent. Welcome to the club. Never mind. I have a new worst. <laughs> I speak Terry. <laughs> my, my worst of the week is, and I forgot to say this on last week's podcast, and I apologize, but this was my worst of last week uh, and this week. Uh, two, at the Super Bowl party that we had at, for Connect Group, I had a 10-year-old. We had a rib cook-off, so all the guys brought ribs. And a 10-year-old, I won't say who, but a 10-year-old told me, uh, your ribs didn't have enough seasoning, and Kevin Mitchell's ribs were too dry. So that was my worst. And my, my comeback was, well, it's a good thing I don't value my uh, 10-year-old's opinion. So, <laughs> well, yeah. 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 Nice. So Take please that. come to Connect Church where Tanner's in charge of our children. I'm not in charge of the children. For the Christmas play. No. You, the, here's the thing. I've been trying for 19 years to develop a discipleship and small group ministry, and it quite possibly you two guys just killed it. We just, we killed it. That's right. Yeah. Between the yeah. cake and, you know, yeah. and the 10-year-old. Hey, mine was great. <laughs> I love my connect group. <laughs> now, my, my real worst, my real worst this week is that um, this Sunday, you know, we had to cancel live services and everything. We went online only, and that was that's not a big deal. That's it, fine. It was sucky. I don't it, like it was it. okay. Yeah. It was okay, yeah. but but we had to uh, last minute rearrange our songs because some of the singers couldn't get in yeah. to uh, get into the church to get out of town. So um, you know, Madison stepped up, did a great job. She did. She did a phenomenal job singing uh, unprepared. Dude, the y'all songs. had church Sunday. Yeah, it was, like, it it was, was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. It, was awesome. Yeah. it was great. But we were going to sing a song that is like my new favorite song right and we didn't get to do it sunday so that was my, my worst like i was uh, really ready sorry. to do this song and uh let's see um carly um dorset and bailey Re- bailey was going to lead the song and it was going to be awesome and we didn't get to do it and so i was really sad about that so we'll have to plug that in another time well a big shout out to appreciate everybody that risked their lives sunday right. and and so we need to you know appreciate all of the team that came out and helped me put the service together and do that too so thank you guys appreciate yeah, it definitely all right, well, that wraps up the Connect Church podcast. We're going to get out of here. It's starting to snow and rain already again here this Woo! Wednesday afternoon, so we got to get home. Y'all have a great week, and we'll see you next time on the Connect Church podcast. Peace. Stay warm. Yeah. <laughs>